Welcome to Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. We left the east coast of the United States with hopes of sailing around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. With Cape Horn behind us, we sailed up the fjords of Patagonia and Chile, but now it's time to make our final preparations for heading out into the open Pacific Ocean. Have you ever dreamed of tossing off the dock lines and setting sail into the open ocean? Join us as we share 10 things we did to prepare the boat to cross the Pacific Ocean. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Sailing Sweet Ruka. As you can see, we're no longer in Chile, it's warm out, and we're wearing shorts. In the last episodes, we tried to catch you up to real time and we're gonna do the same thing today. So today, we're gonna tell you about the 10 things that we did while in Chile to prepare our boat to cross the South Pacific Ocean. Yeah, the first thing that happened was I came back from the United States with a load of spare parts. It's a lot easier just to transport them that way. Otherwise, shipping things get lost, customs hold on to them, or it can be really expensive. And it was time for me to visit my family anyway. So back on the boat, we unloaded all of the things and uh, we had some sweet Ruka gear and stickers, but we also had some important things like engine parts that are hard to find, filters, and what else, Curtis? When sailing so far across the Pacific Ocean, parts become very, very hard to get. It happened to us in South America. It happened to us in the Azores. Basically everywhere we've gone is so remote, it becomes very difficult and very expensive to ship parts. So it's very important that we have all of the parts for the important items to keep us alive and functioning on the boat, which is our engine, our water maker, and our sails and our rigging. So uh, one of the most important things that we brought was all kinds of engine spare parts from hoses to belts, to impeller pumps, uh, everything that we needed, we have on board the boat right now. Sometimes we joke that we have an entire second boat uh, as spares, with minus the keel and the rudder and the wheel. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, we also brought lots and lots of filters, both for water and for fuel. It's very important that uh, we have good, clean fuel on the boat. So one of the things that we need to stock up on is Raycor filters because they get hard to find wherever we go and there's a chance that we can have bad diesel and ruin our filters. The same with the filters for the water maker. We rely on our water maker very heavily when we're sailing so far from land and it's very important that we're able to repair and keep everything functional and clean in that system. One of the things that we had completely worn out on the boat was our existing lines and sheets. So we reached out to Marlo Ropes and Kate brought down all kinds of additional ropes and lines for us to refit all of our running rigging. Yep, thing number two on our list is running rigging. And yes, trying to get that back down was a little bit difficult because they can be so heavy and trying to uh, disperse the weight between different bags was, a, was quite the challenge. But ultimately we got loads and loads of various types of ropes back on Sweet Ruka. Throughout South America, it was very difficult for us to find any good Dyneema ropes. So Marlo hooked us up with all kinds of excellent Dyneema ropes from their Grand Prix series and their club racing series, all the way down to their D12 Dyneema. When I arrived back to the boat with the lines from Marlo, we had a lot of fun going through the different types. It certainly felt like Christmas morning and I got to play Santa Claus. This is D2 Grand Prix. Uh, this is a step up, it's SK78 and this stuff this stuff rocks basically we've got a main sheet and jib sheets here this is for our traveler it's another thing that we've been able to size down just a little bit so it's going to run 
faster and we're going to be able to make better, faster, smoother traveler adjustments um, by having just a few millimeters size down in line um, and changing over to Dyneema. Uh, so yeah, this is D12 uh, SK78, a 6.5 millimeter black, but it's just bare Dyneema without a cover. And this stuff is really handy to have on board the boat. You can use it in so many different ways. In, in a pinch, you can splice it really quickly and you could really on the boat use it for anything in any emergency. And you can make soft shackles with it, which is soft always, shackles. we're always looking for soft shackles. Yep. Okay, next. Oof, this one's heavy. Okay. This is uh, D12 Max SK78. And this is uh, also in black. This is really, really good stuff. More just raw Dyneema. So this is uh, D12 78 six millimeter in white. And then this is uh, D12 78 four millimeter, and that's in yellow. And actually what we're gonna use this for is to replace our existing jack lines that, that have gotten a little faded and, and worn away, but these it's gonna increase the visibility on the deck as well. So I'm excited about that. All right. But this is the same stuff that we have right now on our uh, reef lines and it works really, really good. Also, uh, bio-based Dyneema core, uh, super strong and allowing us to go from 12 millimeter uh, lines into 10 millimeter lines, which just makes everything easier. Another one, this is the same, same, same type of line. Um, again, this is like their club racing or performance cruising level line. Basically, this is a, these are Grand Prix level lines, which are a step up in performance, um, obviously in price as well. Uh, but these are their club level and cruising lines, which we've been using a lot of. This is gonna replace our furling line. Thanks to Marlo, we were able to replace and size down our old main sheet and jib sheets that were chafed and stiff. The Traveler used to be quite difficult to move, but now is smooth as butter. We replaced the Cunningham, jib furling line, and spliced up new jack lines for our safety up on deck. Our lazy jacks, which had failed twice in Patagonia, are now also fresh and new. Curtis used the super strong Max SK78 to splice up a new preventer for us. And little did we know at the time how these ropes from Marla would come in and save the day on our Pacific journey. Do you like Marlo ropes? Do you like Marlo ropes? Yeah? yeah? Another huge thank you to Marlo ropes for supplying us with all of our new running rigging. It's so important to us for safety and for performance, uh, being able to keep us ahead of the weather, being able to trim our sails properly, and also for our safety lines on the boat to be able to have us clipped in and staying aboard as we're sailing double-handed. Yeah, and also the they are the only bio-based Dyneema, which is really important for us as we're thinking about the environment. So thank you, Marlo. The third thing that we did to prepare our boat for the Pacific Ocean was to get new sails. We ordered a new mainsail from Evolution Sails, 180sails.com, and it came through. It looked absolutely amazing, and it's really increased the performance of our boat. That combined with the Marlow Dyneema has been able to make our sail trim and performance so much better aboard the boat. Yeah, we got to test out the new mainsail a little bit when we went back through the fjords in the, the northern half of Patagonia and uh, try out our, our really fancy jib and our really fancy mainsail. And we just had a blast uh, fine tuning it upwind, reaching downwind and all the different conditions that we had sailing in Patagonia. So now we're ready for the open ocean. The fourth thing that we did to make our boat ready to go sailing in the open ocean was do a rig inspection. Of course, after we put all of the new sails on, we want to make sure that the rig can support the loads. So we both went up the rig and we inspected all of our stays, uh, all of the mast, all of the fittings, and we wanted to look for what? We wanted to see if there were any cracks or corrosion or any chafing. We also want to see if there are any pins or anything sticking out that could rip a sail while underway. So yeah, we're uh, just making sure everything's looking good to go. And everything, of course, did look good to go and we were ready to leave the dock. But first, we need to talk about number five. So number five on our list is the autopilot. And just as I was saying before, we have almost two of everything on the boat, and that includes the very heavy autopilot ram. Yeah, our autopilot is very, very important to us as double-handed sailors. 
There's only two of us aboard and we need to be able to sleep. So that means the autopilot needs to drive almost all of the time. And if we have a failure, if anything happens, that's a really long way. Almost 4,000 miles is our sailing distance that we need to go to get to the next port. So very important for our autopilot to function properly. We rebuilt our primary autopilot with new seals and new oil and we tested the system to make sure that everything was functioning 100% so that we were good to go into the Pacific. We kept our first autopilot as a spare, the one that we rebuilt, and we moved our spare as our primary uh, to make sure that we have a really, really good functioning backup if we ever need it. Number six on our list is functioning batteries. This boat is pretty high tech and we've got a lot, a lot of electronics and things, including our autopilot we just mentioned, that consume a lot of energy. So we wanna make sure we've got a, a nice working battery bank. Yeah, our batteries are our primary life support system on board the boat. They not only run our autopilot, our electronics, they also take care of our water maker, our safety lights, and basically everything else that we need to kind of stay alive and, and functioning while navigating out on the open ocean. So we did have a problem with our original batteries that we installed way back in 2019. So we went and we sourced some new lithium batteries in Chile and we installed those. So we're 100% ready to go. Number seven. One of the things that we noticed while doing a lot of sailing was that Roxy was having a hard time walking around downstairs on the cabin sole. So the bare wood sole was a little bit slippery for her. So Kate decided to find some carpets with a rubber back bottom in Chile. So that way Roxy could have more grip as she walked around the cabin in the big open ocean waves. Yeah, before we just used yoga mats and um, little rugs and that seemed to work okay, but they slid around a lot themselves, even with a little bit of rubber on the other side. Um, her balance really was uh, struggling at times. Actually, she's really good at walking, but we thought we could still help her along. And so uh, we, we custom cut uh, a big roll of carpet and fit it in. So now it, it's really nice and snug in there and she can run all through the boat and, and eat comfortably and drink comfortably while underway. Uh, Kate rolled out all of the carpet on the dock, custom cut everything to fit. And we made all of these little pieces uh, go really well downstairs. And so if you have a dog, one tip, some carpets to help her walk around downstairs. Yeah, it seemed to work really well and we'll show some of that in uh, the upcoming crossing episodes. Okay, on to number eight. 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 <laughs> nope, I did nine. <laughs> eight. Number eight, provisioning. Yes, um, when we're looking at three, maybe four weeks at sea, we want to make sure we've got a lot of food. But not only that, we heard it's quite expensive in French Polynesia, so we doubled up and, and bought even more food to try to get through so that we don't have to buy so much when we arrive here in French Polynesia. And uh, the real one that we had to look out for was Roxy. We wanted to make sure that we had the same brand of food um, for as long as we could, and, uh, and also that we weren't stuck in any little atoll or, or sandy spot where there's no stores and there's no dog food. Um, I'm sure she'd be happy with uh, chicken and rice, but uh, for now, it's really nice to just uh, keep consistent uh, diet for her. So yeah, that was uh, one of the things that we did waiting to the very last second to get fresh uh, food, fruits and vegetables and all of our fridge and freezer stuff. So yeah, it's about a, it, it takes about a day or two to uh, buy everything and then put it all away and try to figure out how you're gonna organize it and cram it into the little crevices on the boat. <laughs> Ready for number nine? Nine. Okay. So for number nine, the, the very last thing that we did off the boat was getting fuel. We went to the gas station in Puerto Mont. We filled up all of our jerry cans and just stuffed the boat with fuel. So we've got about 130 gallons on board and that should be able to take us all the way through French Polynesia, which will save us a lot of money because fuel here is almost double the cost because everything has to come in on a small ship and in uh, 200 liter barrels. Yeah, so after we uh, we filled our tanks and filled the cans, there was only one thing left to do. And that is number 10, look at the weather. Obviously we had a really, really long trip ahead of us and weather is a very crucial part of the trip. There's basically two routes that you can take from Chile to get to French Polynesia. One is the Northern route. The Northern trade route is the route that most people take. It's a little bit easier. It's a little bit gentler. 
and most of the wind is going to be from behind. Uh, it's also a little bit warmer and less chance for storms. Another route you can take, which is significantly faster and is more on the Great Circle, which, so you sail less miles, is the Southern Route, which the Southern Route, you may run into headwinds, you may run into very large waves, you may run into storms, but you can take about 25 to 30% off of the time that it takes you to be able to sail there. So the Northern Route forecast for us was about uh, 23 to 25 days. The Southern Route forecast for us was as low as 16 days. In the end, we chose the Northern Route. We're cruising, we wanna take it easy, we're not racing, and we wanna have a nice, enjoyable sail as much as we can downwind and not have to beat against big waves or challenge storms. And after a long time in Patagonia, I was ready for a, a little bit warmer temperatures as well. Yeah, so as you can see from the videos, uh, the last few weeks, we experienced some really nice warm trade wind sailing, but we also got into some pretty big breeze and we actually had to get the storm sail and our third reef out a few times and we were still surfing along to 10 knots. So we're really excited to show you the next videos, which is going to be leaving Patagonia, leaving Chile, and then sailing all the way across the Pacific Ocean to our destination where we are now, which is Gambier in French Polynesia. Yeah, most people arrive from Panama, so we're a little bit uh, outsiders here coming in a different route. And it was not always easy trade wind sailing as we were coming from Chile. So lots of crazy fun surprises for you guys in the upcoming episodes of our passage. Yeah, we've got lots and lots of sailing action coming up. So make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like. And also, if you'd like some Sweet Ruka sailing gear or to see our live tracker, make sure you head on over to our website www.sweetruka.com. You can also find real-time updates and uh, extra goodies of information over on our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash Ruka. It's a huge help and a great community there of, of sailors and non-sailors alike uh, with a lot more discussion and inside information about what's going on uh, via Sweet Ruka. And it really helps our journey if you if you go on over there. Um, so check it out. Uh, we've got some really uh, affordable plans. And uh, if not, we really just love it if you click subscribe and come along for the ride. See you guys later. See you next week. It's time for us to go explore this island. Oh, look who's here. Hi, Roxy. Look who's here. Hey, buddy. Roxy. Hi. Look who's, yeah. <laughs> you smell the cat? <laughs>